Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and less than a week from today will be the solar eclipse, the shadow of which cuts across the northwest to central part of the United States. Um, in New Mexico here, we're only going to have a partial eclipse, but I thought it might be fun to show you a couple ideas for making an eclipse viewer. Um, I built one of these a few years ago for a partial solar eclipse, and it was interesting. It's kind of fun. So there's a lot of different ways of making a pinhole eclipse viewer, but mine is going to be based on this three foot long, 36 inch uh, mailing tube I got from a local uh, office supply store. Um, the size of it, it, diameter wise, is not too important. They make a size, this is what, three inches in diameter? They make a size that's four inches, but you don't need that big of a, of a tube because you're not actually going to be making an image of the sun that big. So the way this works is we're going to have a pinhole, uh, and it's going to be larger than a pin-sized hole. And we're going to have it in the middle of one of these caps. And then on the other end, we're going to have a viewing device. When I did this a few years ago, I had a little piece of eighth-inch thick white translucent lucite plastic that I used as a rear projection screen. Basically the pinhole image projects itself onto the front side of this piece of plastic and you can kind of see the image through the back side of it. Now you can use a piece of plastic like that or you can use a clear piece of acrylic plastic and sand down the front side with really fine emery paper to make it more like a ground glass view screen or you can actually use a ground glass view screen made of glass if you want it. Um, either one of those three methods will work as a, uh, as a rear projection screen, uh, but the problem with rear projection screens, of course, is that not all of the light passes through uh, on the image. In other words, the light hits the front of the screen, some of it's reflected off and only a bit of it diffuses through. Some of that is lost in the translucent material through diffusion. So you don't see all of the light with a rear projection screen. And the problem there is uh, with our pinhole, the size of the image of the sun is directly dependent on the length of the tube, the length of the camera. And the brightness how bright that image is, it depends on the size of the hole. But the bigger the hole is, yes, the image will be brighter, but it'll also be much softer. It won't be sharp edged. Um, so there's a, there's a balance or a trade-off between having a more sharply defined edge and uh, having it too faint to see. And so we're going to try this rear projection method, and I'll, I'm just going to go out today and we can actually try it out on the full sun here. Uh, if it doesn't get cloudy, that is. <laughs> We've been getting afternoon rains. Okay, first of all, the, uh, this mailing tube or shipping tube has two plastic end caps. And uh, if you test the end caps out, you'll see that they are not opaque. They are translucent. So we don't want any sunlight getting into the through the caps except for through our pinhole. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drilling about a quarter inch hole in the middle of this cap just big enough so I can then put little pieces of brass or whatever with pinholes I can tape them. But I, after I drill that bigger hole I'm going to spray paint this uh, flat black. So I'm going to use a quarter inch Forstner bit in this drill press and I'm just going to approximate where the center of this uh, thing is here. And not too bad. I think I'll clean up the back side of it. So I do need to do a little cleanup work on the hole, but uh, there's a few little shavings, but it's not bad. This only has to be clean enough so that plastic shavings don't get in the way of the pinhole and that's uh, probably plenty good like that. So even without any spray paint on either cap and with a giant quarter inch hole, you still get a fairly good size image of the sun even though it's uh, very soft edged. So it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with this kind of a pinhole viewer. 
This is more like a pencil hole viewer right now. Okay, I'm going to take the front cap out and I'm going to uh, spray it with some matte black spray paint and I'm going to spray the, the front side, which is the recessed side, because the back side is where I'm going to tape on my little pieces of brass to try different size pinholes. And I don't want to flake off the paint uh, if the, pa the painted side is in the back. So we'll, pa we'll spray paint the front side and it won't take too long to dry just because it's pretty sunny outside. And it's only a minute or so later and this thing is already dried, ready to go. And hey, look at my piece of uh, newspaper. Doesn't that look like a total eclipse, like the corona of the sun? Hmm. Okay, so I went online on a pinhole calculator website and I gave the focal length as being uh, about 900 millimeters and it recommended a 1.2 millimeter pinhole. So I have a pinhole here that's already had it made up. And so what I'm gonna do is, so here's some black gaffers tape. This is about an inch wide. And I'm gonna get a little square of it, or rectangle. And then what you wanna do is you wanna fold it so the glue side, fold it in half so the glue side is out and make two little snips at 90 degrees to each other so when you're looking at it it forms a kind of a v-shaped notch and then when you open it up it makes a diamond shaped hole and then what you're going to do is simply take your pinhole and now we have enough tape on the back side that we can center the pinhole from the front we can look at it the cap from the front side and we can center the hole in the hole of the cap and press the tape down like that. So now we have our pinhole centered in our quarter inch cap and the back side is just like that. Well, there is an image, but and it's about a quarter inch in diameter, but it's really faint. There's a lot of stray light coming in here. We're gonna have to shield this from the stray light. So I have this little spare piece of black uh, mat board and I'm going to use it as a shield to put around the back of the uh, tube so that when we look up at, toward the sun it'll block the view of the bright side of the bright part of the sky and we won't get so blinded hopefully. So this is three inch supposedly. Oops. Supposedly this is three inches. This looks like a three and an eighth. So half of that is one and a half and a sixteenth. Mark that so I know where the edge should be and I can center this up. One and a half plus a sixteenth. You guys in the rest of the world that use a metric system, boy, it makes a hell of a lot more sense than impurity. Anyways, okay. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to center this up so all these marks are even around the periphery of the tube. So that means we're pretty close to being centered. And I will mark it with my little mechanical pencil. Now here's another little handy tool is a compass cutter. This has a razor blade type mat knife. Here it is. And it's like an adjustable compass. And so I find the little scale on it though is not really that accurate. So you have to kind of just line up the blade with where you want to cut and tighten up the little nut, little knob, and then you have to turn it in the direction of the blade. And it helps to uh, go around the opposite side also, hit it from the reverse side. And there we have our, our hole there that hopefully will fit around our tube in the back. Okay, let's tape this up and see what happens. So this is with the camera pointing up in the sky just barely away from the sun and now if we put this little shielded end of the tube and we can cast a shadow of that black piece of mat board against the camera and that shields the lens and now the whole trick is just going to be acquiring the pinhole image of the sun in the tube. So for hand holding this pinhole telescope 
And just viewing an image of it on the white plastic uh, diffusion screen in the back, this little shield is going to be good. It'll shield your eyes from the sun, from the bright glare around the sun. But it's not really practical for looking at it or taking a picture of it. So what I've done is I've just simply made a round tube out of some craft paper. And it's just going to fit around the end of the tube. And we're going to stick that right onto the camera. Now, we do have a little bit of light coming in uh, around the edge of the paper because it's not perfectly form-fitting, so I'm going to have to tape that up like this. So it's form-fitting, and it's big enough to go around the lens hood of the, of the lens, but it's small enough to fit onto the body of the camera, so it shields the camera from the sun. Okay, so this is an image of the sun. And the way I line this up, because you can't see, <laughs> so I, I'm basically standing in front of the camera and I'm casting a shadow over the view screen of the camera so that the view screen of the camera is flipped around pointing forward in the vlogger style. But I can see the shadow of the tube on the ground behind the tripod and I basically line the shadow of the tube up so it's perfectly circular, it's as small as possible, which means it's pointing right at the sun. So it looks like this little thing is kind of fairly successful. Um, you're not going to get a super sharp picture out of it, obviously, because it is pinhole. And you're projecting the pinhole at three feet, so it's a long pinhole camera. Um, so the fuzziness on the edge gets expanded along with the size of the uh, image. This is one way that you can actually take video of the eclipse with a pinhole uh, type of device. Now I would recommend if you're going to visually uh, observe the pinhole, I would say to go ahead and make one of these cardboard baffles and then have one of these black paper tubes coming off from the back of it. And what you can do is you can then view it like that and that blocks a lot of your stray light and this piece of cardboard helps you to point it up at the sun and not blind yourself. Okay, so we have one method of making a, a pinhole viewing telescope uh, using a rear surfaced uh, uh, diffuse screen. I was going to mention that you could get some of this. This is lucite plastic, like what, 1 8, 1 16th inch, and it's clear, but this side I have sanded down with a random orbital sander and it makes a ground glass view screen you might get a brighter image so that's another option for you and so here I am uh, I'm actually going to do that I'm going to use gaffer's tape I cut off a piece of this plastic material and I'm just gaffering it gaff taping it gaffering it is that a, is that a real word I'm gaffering it to the cap. I've, I've made a rectangular, kind of a crude rectangular hole that will be enough hopefully to cast an image. So what I've done is I've pushed my uh, little shield plate down onto the end about seven or eight inches and you can adjust that it slides and then we'll put our tube of black paper along the end of it for the, for the camera. Because uh, the camera actually has to focus to the screen from roughly here to here, we actually need a close-up lens. We need a lens that will focus uh, close up. Uh, so like a macro focus lens. So I've thrown on this 25 millimeter f1.8 manual focus seven artisans lens, which I'm adjusting the exposure by altering the aperture. And that is a close focus, uh, close focus lens. So I should be able to focus right on that view screen. Okay, let's go out and try this, shall we? Okay, so I'm at my lowest ISO of ISO 200. I'm on this 25 millimeter 7 Artisans manual focus lens. It stopped down all the way to f16, and uh, that looks uh, kind of nice, actually. It looks sharper than it was with the plastic cap on the shipping tube. So this. Uh, Using a piece of clear lucite, sand it down on one side, definitely gives a sharper image. With a tube like this, with your uh, about a millimeter hole for a three foot 
36 inch tube. I, and this is about optimal, one millimeter for 36 inches. You have your little viewing baffle to protect your eyes against the bright part of the sky and you have your little extension tube back here to put around your camera lens and also to use as a viewing shield for yourself. And then you have your little ground glass view screen in the back cap with a piece of uh, thin translucent plastic that's been sanded down on one side to make a ground glass view screen. So this is kind of the uh, a really good way to get a nice uh, pinhole telescope for this for the eclipse and you can also use your cell phone stick your cell phone in there and take a picture of it right well i hope you guys had fun with this project making a fairly simple uh pinhole solar eclipse viewing telescope um, i think it works pretty well with the plastic uh, acrylic plastic uh, view screen that you sand down with fine sandpaper like emery cloth at least 400 grit on the front side. Uh, that works pretty good as a view screen. Uh, the big uh, thing is you want to protect your eyes from looking directly at the sun, which is why you have that big black piece of poster board or mat board around the tube so it kind of shields your whole face. You're in the shadow of that mat board and the only light you're going to get is from the pinhole itself, which is very little light. And the other advice I would recommend is to make sure you don't point the digital camera at the sun uh, directly without the viewer, because that will possibly burn a uh, burn something in your sensor. But uh, hope you guys have fun with this project. Now this is a three foot long telescope, so you the other part of this thing is how are you going to stabilize it? What kind of a like a tripod? You'd have to get a tall tripod because uh, when you're looking at this eclipse, um, you're, let's see, what time of the day is this going to be? I think it's early afternoon or something. Anyways, the sun's going to be fairly high in the sky, and this tube is going to be elevated, so you're going to have to figure out how to support it. Maybe you can find a high brick wall or fence and rest it up on the fence pointing to the south like that or something, but it would take a pretty big tripod to support it. So that's your job, is to figure out how you're gonna aim this thing and support it. I hope you guys have fun with the eclipse. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. You guys take it easy and have a great day.